The Holtville Vikings perennial running back speaks out about the coming spring football season. Welcome back, everyone. Two sets of Yuma rivalries get started while one area power continues to make its case for a state title contention. Student athlete is now signed, sealed, and delivered for the next level. I'm standing on the bleachers in a place Matador fans call the house. Now, if the games do return in early 2021, many questions linger about the overall fan experience. Like many other sporting events across the country, venues like these at AWC could remain empty. Even though the defensive unit might be the strength of this team, Brando, the last couple of weeks, the offense led by sophomore quarterback Richard Stallworth has been picking up the slack. So the Shamrocks playing host to Cortez in tonight's marquee matchup in a David versus Goliath contest with YC being the heavy favorites in this one as we take you out to Ricky Gwynn Stadium for the highlights with head coach Rex Stallworth looking on early on. Very first play from scrimmage. Very first place, Brando. <laughs> YC not wasting any time. Richard Stallworth rolls right. Launches a deep ball. Mario Martinez snags it, scoring on a 75-yard pass play. That's how you Rocks get started. exploding out the gate, seven nothing. Welcome back. Arizona Western College is a Yuma area institution that has provided top-notch junior college sports since 1963. Since the coronavirus pandemic took effect back in March, the program continues to face its longest competition delay in school history. Initially, it was just a big shock. It was like a, like no way, like. They're not going to do this. It was just very unusual to happen, and nobody expected it at all. I've been in two-year college athletics for 47 years. And no, at no time have I ever seen anything even close to this. Arizona Western College Athletics has delivered collegiate sports to the Yuma area for more than half a century. But in March, the unprecedented happened. Coronavirus locked down the Matador program, bringing challenges to its next season. That was our biggest experience with the first part of COVID as a coaching staff and athletic department staff. It's just things, we would we would have a meeting and things would literally change the next day. I think it's definitely uh, a challenge, but I don't think it's uh, a challenge for for just us. The widespread ripple effects of collegiate sports closures prompted the National Junior College Athletics Association to set back all JUCO sports seasons until January of 2021. It's a decision the Matadors hope doesn't lead to any further delays. They say it's going to be over by this time, and they say it's going to be over by the next month, and like every time it would get closer and closer, like it would just kind of hurt a little bit more. Campus COVID-19 protocols have limited personal interactions. Program staff and coaches hold only virtual meetings that also carry over into recruiting and student athlete training exercises. In many cases, practices are reduced to less intensive classes that abide by social distancing and sanitizing guidelines. We have to wipe down everything, make sure we have our mask on. Um, still the rule applies with six feet apart. Um, every time we throw a ball, we have to sanitize it. Even though we are still able to meet semi face to face, it's, it's not the same. So far, the short term financial impacts are minimal as most business sponsors continue to pledge their support for Matador Athletics. But the school's overall enrollment drop of 12% since the start of the pandemic could potentially bring long-term effects. You know, I wouldn't anticipate us uh, losing any revenue, but we, we could. I mean, enrollment's a big driving factor about income and about our budgets. Other looming concerns are player safety and competition and the quality of future games. Most of the incoming and returning student athletes have gone without team practices for more than seven months. When the student athletes return and get cleared to play, they will only have roughly three weeks to become game ready. It's going to really come down to our student athletes and how much grit they have to just get the work done at home and realize even over winter break if they have to and when we get back in January that we got to kind of hit the ground running more so than normal this year. I think once guys get back on the court and get to playing and things normalize, I think a year from now you won't see as much sloppiness as you will probably from now until you know August or September of next year. I'm standing on the bleachers in a place Matador fans call the house. Now if the games do return in early 2021 many questions linger about the overall fan experience. Like many other sporting events across the country venues like these at AWC could remain empty. With regards to fans we'd love to have them out if we're able to but you know everything's still up in the air at this point and probably get better closer word when uh, January rolls around. If we don't allow fans to come, then we're, we're going to be streaming 
uh, all of our games so, so our fan base can, can watch. The Arizona Community College Athletic Conference is supposed to have a further update in place sometime in November on the latest status of Arizona JUCO sports for next year. In the meantime, the program believes it's ready to make a comeback. Probably going to be um, a little bit longer growing pains than we're used to, but we're going to do the best that we can with what we have. It's not going to stop us from trying to accomplish our goals, just as it's not going to stop like our basketball team, our soccer team. Like We're all going to keep going. Our dream and goal is just to, to participate again in January if possible. Now, if the ACCAC gives the green light, the earliest AWC can return to full practice on campus is January the 4th. Wheat News 11 Sports will bring you the latest developments on the return of Matador Athletics.